the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Wow, that didn't pan out. <laughs> One year ago today, the Taliban swept into Kabul and seized total control of Afghanistan after President Biden made the decision to withdraw American troops. Trey Yingst is live in Kabul. Hey, Trey, how you doing? Hey, Greg, good afternoon. Today, the Taliban took a victory lap, piling into pickup trucks and driving through the capital of Kabul. Take a look at this. Right now, the Taliban is parading through the streets of Kabul. They're marking one year since the takeover of Afghanistan. You can see these fighters here celebrating. Many civilians, though, remain in hiding, uncertain about what comes next for their country. Was to breathe. As his mother the last looks year on. has been anything but a celebration for the Afghan people. When you look at the situation on the ground, the economy has collapsed, plunging millions of people into poverty. Women's rights have decreased, and the security situation remains fragile. But when you walk through the streets of Kabul, there is a sense of routine and normalcy. There are street vendors selling food. There's traffic. People are out and about. But behind that veneer sits uncertainty and fear for Afghan civilians, especially those American allies who were working with the United States during the last 20 years. We spoke with the Taliban extensively about their views on Islamic law and also women's rights and education, but we had a very interesting conversation with an official from the foreign ministry this week when I pressed him on the Taliban's view of the U.S. drone strike that took place last month, taking out the leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahri. Take a listen. Late last month, the leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahri, was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Kabul. Did the Taliban know he was here? The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan made it very clear that the leadership was not aware of either his arrival nor his presence in Kabul, and they will continue to uh, conduct uh, the investigation to verify facts. But the fact of the matter remains that this was a grave violation of international law by the United States of America conducting unilateral actions inside a sovereign state. The bottom line is you can't take the Taliban at face value. You can't trust what they say when you interview them. But the most important thing here is the civilian population, especially those who were U.S. allies working with the United States. And when we were here last year on the runway at Kabul's international airport, when those evacuations were taking place, we thought this couldn't get any worse for these individuals. They have to leave their entire lives behind, and if they can't get on those planes, they have to stay here. But we are back a year later, and things have gotten worse, and they appear that they are getting worse each and every day for every person here under Taliban control. Greg. Thank you, Trey. So, Will, I want to uh, talk, try to distinguish between the decision to leave, which Trump had signed. I mean, this was something we we're doing, and how it was carried out, in which you couldn't do much worse. And I think, can you, can you separate those two? You know, I don't even know if you can separate the exit from the 20-year debacle that was our investment in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can criticize and we should criticize the exit because, to your point, Greg, I don't know that it could have been done worse. The mm -hmm. estimates are 800 American citizens left behind. Clearly, no plans, no long-term plans, no organized plans to get us out. So what was accomplished before that cat catastrophic exit? Um, whatever it was, we gave it all back in 12 months' time. Mm -hmm. I mean, women's rights are gone. Um, you know, al-Qaeda has a presence, clearly, with Ayman al-Zawahiri there at the time. And my big takeaway is, yes, it's worth looking into the past, but also why don't we let it inform the present and the future in the same group that so advocated for our presence and even our exit in this manner from Afghanistan was the one itching to go into Ukraine. Mm -hmm. you, Richard, I mean, you, you were nodding along, and I think that what is the lesson learned here about something that we were holding and then the moment we left, it all returned the way it was? Well, there is a lesson in there. Oh, there's definitely a lesson, and I think the lesson is two, th threefold. I think lesson number one is our lawmakers have got to be more thoughtful. For 20 years, yes, people lap up a lot of blame at Joe Biden, and fair enough, those criticisms are fair. But think about this. For 20 years, members of Congress approved budget after budget after budget, and nobody asked to say, so you say there's... 300, 800, 8,000 uh, uh, Afghani troops. Can I go look at them? Can I see them? Are they there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clearly they were not. And, and I think what makes this so frustrating for me is that this war started when I was a freshman in high school. I am now 35 years old. This country lays in ruin. American blood was spread 
all across this country. These are my classmates. These are my neighbors. These are my friends. And now we're sitting here and watching this country go into a dismal collapse. And the question I'm asking myself, similar to Will, is why were we there in the first place? And we're also dealing with the fact that there was so much mission creep. At first, it was, we're going to get bin Laden. Then it was, we're going to go build a democracy. Then it was, we're going to surge. Then we're going to take them away. Then we're going to surge again. And the American people were left in the middle trying to figure out, well, what's really happening in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Dana, just listening to, to both of them, it's something about you can't really make any progress if there's no prosperity in a country. It's like you try to think you, you, they're going to be like once they figure this out. But if they have no way, then it's always going to revert back to what it that's was. That's a story from all around the world, right? Yeah. That's why one of the reasons when Kamala Harris says she's going to Latin America and she's going to figure out the root causes, you actually have to figure out, one, corruption. Yes. That is a big issue. Education is a big issue. And part of that is if you're going to make 50 uh, percent of your population not allowed to leave the house, without being fully covered, you can't go to a doctor if you're a woman, you're not going to be able to be educated, you're going to suppress 50% of your cap human capital, you're going to have problems. When, um, when President Biden decided to do this, uh, his poll numbers, the way that he did it, the poll numbers never recovered. That's just true. You can look at it, and it's just like they went down. They, they got to a point where people said, we, can, we are embarrassed by this incompetence, and then everything else started happening. As gas prices continue to rise and inflation increase. Um, conditions were not being met that President Trump set out. He said, we will leave if this happens. Mm -hmm. Those things that were supposed to happen were not happening, and they left anyway. As you saw with Salman, Salman Rushdie, our enemies, and, 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 uh, people against freedom, are very patient. Okay, so, like, for us, we're like, oh, since I was a freshman in high school, mm -hmm. I can't take it anymore. And I get, I, I absolutely get it. And there is an obligation on behalf of leaders to say, this is why we're doing this, this is why it matters. That went away, and so, so we have that. I would, I would add this, in, in addition to the 800 citizens that were left, 96% of special immigration visa holders, the people who actually were on the ground, the Afghans who helped us, along with our forces, who helped save their lives, they didn't make it out. And right now at the State Department, it would take them 18 years to deal with the backlog that they oh. have. So the, the, the incompetence continues on, at, at the bureaucratic level. Mm. Dagan, I was told that this was the new, improved Taliban. <laughs> I'm extremely disappointed. You are. I'm a woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you identify as a woman. Today? Yes. You're going to get me in trouble, aren't you? <laughs> um, to Dana's point, I looked at the poll numbers, the overlay of approval versus disapproval. August 20th is the day that his he went from net approval, a net approval rating, to a net disapproval. And Joe Biden has been deep in the red ever since then because of, to Dana's point, his incompetence. I call it his stubborn yeah. stupidity. But also on full display was how he blithely lies to the American people over and over and over again repeatedly. And I think that that was what turned Americans against him. When George Stephanopoulos says your top military leaders uh, warned against withdrawing on this timeline. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. U.S. troops, will, he, Biden said, U.S. troops will stay, in Af, uh, stay until all Americans are out of Afghanistan. No, they didn't. Al-Qaeda's gone from Afghanistan. No, it's not. Our allies are with us. No, they weren't. If you're an American, you can get to the airport. No, they couldn't. Over and over and over again, he stood up in front of the American people and lied. And a lot of, uh, so many people just said, we're done. We don't trust you. There's the door. And then they wanted credit for the largest airlift in history. Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Here's our screw up. It broke records. Okay. <laughs> up next, even some Democrats are having to admit Texas migrant busing strategy. It's pretty brilliant. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.